Hi, I'm Alison and I'm the Outdoor Learning Officer. And I'm Jean and I'm the Community Engagement Officer for the Pendle Hill Landscape Partnership. You might have met me before while attending some of my family events during the summer holidays, but this year it's a little bit different. So we're delivering some John Muir discovery sessions all for families, virtually by the means of the internet. Welcome to week one. This week's theme is mini beasts and pollinators. I'm going to put this just underneath here and hopefully we'll get some spiders, some harvestmen, ants, ladybirds and even a lovely woodlouse moving in there. Tiniest little worm just here, stuck on my thumb. Soldier beetles, and I always think they look like the Welsh guards, and that's how I remember them. Lay them out nicely, and then using either a mallet or a stone, just give things a little bit of a tap, and hopefully you get a lovely picture. Let's see. We're going to show you how to play plant bingo. Um, you can download it straight from our website, so you can download it onto your phone or a tablet, so you don't need to print it off. So, I've got the wildflower bingo sheet on my phone today because the weather's not particularly great. And the first species I've identified is this, which is a really nice harebell. So this week, why don't you take a walk to your local park and see how many birds you can spot on the way? Why not try and walk through some woodland, across some fields, or even along the stretch of your local river and see what different species you may find? Look over there, Alison. There's a heron. Oh, yeah. Off it goes. So I've got my pine cane and I'm just going to add some string. Jane's already busy trying to coat her toilet roll in lots of lard. This adds as a great fat for the birds, which they do need to eat. The lard also acts as a bit of a glue for all your seeds. So you just roll it in the seed box and coat as much as you can on there. So you just roll it in your bird seed. And now they're ready to hang outside, either in your garden or if you don't, even if you don't have a garden, you can hang them on windowsills or outside your front door. And then take a seat and sit back and watch the birds come and get some lovely food. Dry stone walls offer lots of practical uses for landowners and farmers, such as this field here, which is being backed up by this extra fencing next to this dry stone wall to keep these sheep in the right field. If you look at dry stone walls, you might see lots of moss and lichen growing along old walls particularly. Now dry stone walls also offer lots of habitats for things like mice and voles, even stoats and weasels. So do have a good look in all the cracks to see if you can find them. So today we're going to show you how to do a mini excavation experiment. So we're going to start by burying our first item at the bottom. And if you want to add a layer of compost around 10 centimetres tall, I'm going to bury this first one and Alison's going to add in some more soil for us. So once you've done the first layer, you might then want to add a different item. And I'm going to bury another item in here whilst Alison keeps adding the compost. And in eight weeks time, um, we want you to see if you can excavate your finds that you put in that um, container. So using different materials, such as a trowel, um, toothbrushes or a sieve, and we want to see if you can find everything that you put in there. We're going to have a look for some bats with our bat detector. But remember, you don't need a bat detector to spot bats. Touch is on, off we go. It looks really dark in here, Jane. Let's switch to night vision. We've just found this lovely little frog that's obviously been hopping around at night. I'll have to look for some flies. So we've just spotted a bat in the trees behind us next to the river, and Jane can pick it up on the bat detector. I think that's probably a common for the stress. The bat's just circling these two trees, obviously picking up insects as they fly high at night. Ooh. So we're going to show you how to make a really simple footprint tracking tunnel um, that can go in your garden or your friend's garden or your family's garden. So the aim is to have food in the middle of the base plate 
and ink either side so that when the animal crawls in to get the food they have to walk over the ink and therefore leave footprints on the white paper. So if you get a little visitor that comes through your tracking tunnel have a look and see what footprints it leaves behind on your white sheet. Now different animals leave different kinds of footprints so our hedgehog would have left a footprint that looks a little bit like this where you can see all one two three four five toes and the rest of its foot just there. Hedgehogs are the UK's prickly mammal and they have 5,000 spikes when they're fully grown into an adult. And give massive thanks to the two volunteers who allowed me to film this hedgehog footage from their garden. They are lucky enough to have quite a few hedgehogs visit every night. We've been really impressed with the enthusiasm the families have put into their John Muir Discovery War during the summer holidays. It's been lovely watching all the pictures come through my emails and they are pictures of scrapbooks or pictures of the activities themselves or just some simple diary entries. It's been lovely. We hope that all families have actually learnt lots more about their local nature and also about local heritage. It's been lovely to facilitate and we hope you've all enjoyed it too. All the best and thank you very much. for week five and for the whole of the John Muir Family Award. We hope you've enjoyed every challenge. Until next time, see you later. Bye. Bye.